deploying Minio, which is a S3 compatible object storage in Docker environment. If you want to learn more, stick with me. Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here and in this video we're going to see how to deploy Min.io which is a S3 compatible object storage in Docker environment. So also in the next upcoming videos we'll see how to replicate multiple instances of Min.io for high availability and also reliability. So without any delay let's get down to work. So as you can see, I'm in the Minio official website over here. And as it is stated over here, Minio is a high performance S3 compatible object storage for multiple uses and for large scales. It can be run on premises and on cloud, either being public or private. Also, it can be used in production level if it is deployed with the best practices on the edge servers so if you want you can take a look at its website and learn more about the concepts and problems that it tries to solve so minio object storage can be installed many ways as i said in this video we're going to see how to install it in docker environment using a docker compose file so here is the image that i'm going to use in this video so this is the official Minio image on Docker Hub and on the tags section you can find all the tags which you can choose to use whichever version that you want. So there is a little description over here which is saying how to run it with Docker CLI but in this video we're going to deploy it with a Docker Compose file and also it has other documentations on how to install it on macOS with brew or install it using the binary files which are out of scope of this video so moving to the codes over here as you can see i've got a docker compose file and a .m file over here so moving to the codes as you can see i've got a docker compose file and a .m file which is linked to this docker compose file so as always i'll put all the files and configurations in my github repository which you can find the link in the description section down below. So as you can see on my Docker Compose file, I've got only one service, which is Minio itself, which is using the release of 2022 on the 11th month, which is pretty old to use in production level. So I'll recommend using newer versions. So I've got two ports that is exposed outside, one being 9000 and the other being 9001 map to exactly same ports inside the container so basically 9001 will be the port that will be mapped to the administration panel of minio and the other will be mapped to the api server so on the volume sections i've got only one volume that is dot slash minio storage mapped to the slash data inside the container so basically whatever upload that we make will be stored in this slash data inside the container and as a result it'll be accessible inside the dot slash minio storage. So the command that will be run is server dash dash console address on port 9001 which is exactly the port that is mapped to outside and slash data as the directory for the minio to use and store all its data as i said i've linked a .m file to this docker compose which we'll see in a moment and the restart policy for this container will be set to always so the docker engine will try to restart this container for any reason that it might get destroyed so in the .m file I've got two environment variables, one being minio root user, which I've set to admin. You can choose whatever username that you want to be the initial root user. And the other being the minio root password, which I've set to a random string over here. Also, you can choose or generate whatever password for your use case. And the third environment variable, I'll describe about it shortly. So in order to spin up this Minio container, I'll switch to the terminal. I'll hit ls and pwd 
to make sure I'm in the exact same directory that my docker compose file exists and the only command that I'll say is docker compose up dash d to run in daemon mode and as I can see as a result it creates a network and a container attaching to that newly created network so if I say docker compose ps I should be able to see the containers that are created with this docker compose file so as i expect there is only one container with the state op and the ports mapped are exactly the same that i defined in docker compose file also if i say docker compose logs dash f i should be able to see the logs outputted to std out so at this state my container my minio container is up and running if i go to browser to the localhost 9001 i should be able to log in with the username and password that i set in the .m file so if i hit login over here i should be able to log in inside the administration panel and see all the features that is provided in the administration panel so just keep in mind that this panel is only a ui that is talking to the api server of minio which is a s3 compatible object storage server so keep in mind that whatever we do in this administration panel will be able to execute exactly the same things using the API server directly. So as the main thing, I've got buckets section over here, which are like the root directories that will hold the subdirectories and files, which are called objects in the Amazon S3 object storage world. So I can do things like hit the create button over here. So I'll provide a name and if I hit create bucket over here my first bucket will be created and now i should be able to upload files to this so if i hit browse over here so right now i'm inside the test bucket that i just created and by hitting the upload button over here i am able to upload both files and folders directly so if i hit upload file I'll choose my file and as you can see the upload is successful and over here it is showing my file if I click on it I should see the details and the actions that I can do on this file that is so-called object so I can either download it share it or preview it on the share section over here I can create a share link that will be active for maximum of seven days so if I copy this link and share it to anyone so basically anyone that is on the same network and has this link will be actually able to see this file so the only problem is that as you can see in the url section over here it is pointing to my local ip address which we're going to fix in a moment so i'll close this and over here in the identity section i've got the users section in which i can create as many users as i need and by hitting this create user button i am able to provide the username and a password that should be at least eight characters and another concept on the s3 world is the policies to give access to the users actually it is called policy based access control so for example i'll choose read and write policy and if i hit save over here my user should be created and i should be able to also log in with the username and password of this user and over here i've got group section i can create groups i'll provide a random name and i can choose the members that will belong to this group again if i hit save my group will be created and over here in the policies section as you can see i've got some predefined policies but also with a create policy button over here in order to create some custom policies so basically by creating policies we define which users or groups would have what kind of access to the buckets and files and paths inside them so for example the read and write policy 
that we just assigned to the test user. If I go to the row policy section, I'll be able to see and edit the policy itself. So these are some keywords that come with the S3 standards. And actually by configuring the actions and the resources, we define the access policy to the buckets and paths inside them. So there is a page on the MinIO official website that has all the configurations for the policies of S3 standards. So I'll put the link down below. If you want, you can check it out. So we've got some other sections that I'll try to explain and deep dive in them in the next videos, especially the site replication by which we'll try to configure the replication of the buckets and objects between multiple instances of MinIO. Also, I'll put the link whenever it is ready in the description section down below. So as the last point, if I go to the .env file, as we saw, I had the third environment variable that was commented out. So I'll uncomment this. So basically this is the MinIO server URL. If it is being served behind a domain name, you can pass the fully qualified domain name over here so the problem that we had when we try to create a share link that the link would point to the local ip address will be solved with this configuration so if i hit save go to the terminal i'll hit ctrl c to exit the logs and by saying docker compose down and docker compose up dash d again i'll remove my container and create a new one with the new configuration so just keep in mind that changing environment variables will not take effect instantly inside the container so in order to define new environment variables or changing their values we'll have to destroy the container and create another one so this domain name over here i've defined it on my local machine on the slash etc hosts file which is pointing to my laptop's ip address but if you have a local dns server or a public DNS server you can define it on that level and it'll be reachable on your local network or on the internet itself so just keep in mind that this should be pointed to the API server itself and not the administration UI so if I go to this link it'll redirect me to the 9001 because it had nothing after the slash no bucket name and no object name again i'll try to log in i'll just copy the password from here i'll hit login and as you can see i have my bucket over here because i persisted the data and over here if i hit ls you can see the minio storage directory has been automatically created if i hit ls minio storage inside it you can see i have the test bucket so as a result my data is persisted and will also be accessible after the container gets destroyed so if i go inside the bucket on the object that i uploaded if i click the share button over here you can see that it is now pointing to the dummy that i configured in the .env file and if i copy this and paste on a new tab i should be able to see the contents of the file that the share link is pointing to so that's all for this video i hope you learned something new in this one if you have any questions or any recommendations i'll be glad to see in the comment section down below i'll put all the relevant links in the description section down below especially my github repository where you can find all the files and configurations and all the stuff that I create in my videos. Also, don't forget to watch other videos on my channel where I've got videos about other cool technologies and I will also put the next videos about MinIO also in the description section down below. So, don't forget to like and subscribe and with that, I hope to see you in the next video.